Welcome to Trinity's online worship service. Have a great day. Thank you for that welcome, Anne. I'm Pastor Bruce Todd, and I welcome you to this 21st weekend after Pentecost broadcast of the worship service from Trinity Lutheran Church here in Lansdale. We also welcome those who join us on that radio broadcast, 11 o'clock Sunday mornings from Great Songs of the Faith, Word FM at 97.1. We look forward to having you invite your family and friends to join us as well, either on our website or our radio broadcast. At 1030 on Sunday morning, we offer a Zoom communion service so you can share the sacrament with us as we gather together through a Zoom network. You may simply register online or call and leave a message at the office and we will send you the link for our Zoom communion service. Following that, at 11 a.m., we offer coffee chat. You may register for that on our website at trinitylansdale.com as well. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we offer Faith at Four on Trinity's Facebook page at 4 o'clock in the afternoon for an inspirational message from one of our staff members or a member of the congregation. Wednesday, we offer Bible study, both Wednesday morning and Wednesday evening, and that is led by our seminarian, Amy Smith. Once again, you may register for that, also by sending an email to tlc at trinitylansdale.com, indicating you would like to join the Bible study group. We've had a recent baptism this past week of Amelia Shea Marshall. We're happy to welcome her into God's family through that sacrament of holy baptism. We are having Thanksgiving donations received. We are collecting instant mashed potatoes or canned gravy to go directly to Manna on Main Street. We're helping them getting their Thanksgiving baskets together for people who are in need in the community. If you would like to give a financial donation for the Thanksgiving baskets, you may simply send a check to Trinity at 1000 West Main Street here in Lansdale and just mark it for Thanksgiving basket and we will see that it gets to Manna. Appalachian Service Project Christmas tree sales will begin on Thanksgiving weekend from 9 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We ask that you consider purchasing your Christmas tree from our youth who go to the Appalachia area every summer and help rebuild houses and help people in need there. The money raised from the Christmas tree sales helps to finance their trip. Advent is coming up at, believe it or not, the last Sunday of this month. And we are offering activity bags. Advent activity bags will be available next Sunday, the 22nd between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. at the uh, Circular Drive here at Trinity. You may come and pick one up. It includes uh, materials for making an advent wreath and candles, activity sheets, things you can think about on Christmas Eve to use, uh, and to help you do things as a family for the Advent season. This past week, we received the news of the death of Carolyn Weber, uh, her funeral services were this past Friday. We will remember the family in our prayers. All our staff is available either through voicemail or email. If you leave a message, they will return it in a timely manner. Today is also our Commitment Sunday. And once again, we have a generous family who is anonymously giving $75 to anybody who has not pledged before and does pledge this year. So if you haven't been someone who filled out a pledge card and fill one out this year for whatever amount, they will donate $75 to Trinity's ministry. And if you do pledge, but you increase your pledge, even by a little, they'll donate $75 to Trinity. If we get 100 people to do that, that's an extra $7,500 for the ministry here at Trinity. So it'd be a way of making sure we have a healthy post-pandemic church when we're able to resume our activities at church as well as continue our ministries during this time. So to bring you more information about our uh, stewardship uh, program this year, I'd like to invite Chris Johnson to give our Stewardship Minute mission. We are called. Commitment Sunday takes place November 14th and 15th this year at Trinity. Commitment Sunday offers disciples a chance to consider 
how they can generously offer gifts of time, treasure, and talent in the upcoming year. Commitment Sunday offers us an opportunity to make pledges of financial support for the ministries that happen at and through our church. There are two convenient ways to pledge. Disciples can return the pledge card that they received through the mail to the church office. Or, disciples can visit the church website and make a pledge online. Once again, there's an incentive for new pledges, as well as for households who increased their pledge over last year. We are thankful to an anonymous donor family for making this incentive possible. By the way, it is possible to give electronically to the ministries at our church, and we encourage you to check out the church website to find out how you can schedule contributions to be made electronically and automatically in the upcoming year. We ask you to prayerfully consider how you can support our ministries in the upcoming year, and we thank God for the generosity that you demonstrate when you make gifts of your time, your treasure, and your talent to our church. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And I remind you again, you may fill out your pledge card online. You can see the information for that on Trinity's website at trinitylandsdale.com. Or if you want to have a physical one to fill out and you can't find yours, you may call the office to have one mailed to you or pick up one in the bin at the doors outside the Welcome Center here at Trinity. Let us now begin our worship with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Let us continue by singing our gathering hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray together. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue our worship with the reading. A reading from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober, for those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us, not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today, I would like to share with you a story from the Gospel according to Matthew in the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the dirt and hid his one talent. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing his five talents and five more, saying, Master, you handed to me five talents, and I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master's house. In the same way, the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed me two talents. See, I have made two more. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Though the one who had received one talent also came forward. Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you? 
that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter, then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was mine with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But those who have nothing, even what they have, will be taken. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it's time for the children's chat. So if you let the youngsters near the screen, I'd like to chat with them. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm out here because I want to talk about planting some seeds. And let's say you were one of three gardeners that worked for a very wealthy person that had tons of ground and they wanted you to take care of planting things. And let's say you and two other gardeners were given tons of seeds and they wanted you to plant them while they were going away for a long time and then they were going to come back and see how well you took care of their grounds and what you did with the seeds. Let's say they were going for a long time and one person, when the owner came back, they said, well, what did you do with the seeds? And they said, well, I planted them and I grew beautiful fruit trees. And the owner said, well done, good and faithful servant. I'm really pleased. And then he asked the other gardener, and what did you do while I was gone? Well, I planted your seeds and made these beautiful flower beds. And the owner said, well done, good and faithful servant. I'll reward you. And then he went to the other gardener and said, and what did you do while I was gone? And he said, well, I didn't want to risk not having the seeds be able to grow, so I saved them. And I have all your seeds right here. He said, you wicked servant, you didn't do anything that you were supposed to do. I didn't want you to just keep those seeds. I wanted you to do something with them and have them be, turn into something beautiful. Well, that's similar to what Jesus is saying. Which one of the gardeners would you want to be? Would you want to be the one that just kept the seeds in a closet until the owner came back? Or do you want to have been the one that made the owner happy and planted them into beautiful flowers or beautiful fruit trees? Well, in today's Bible lesson, a man went away and he left some money. He left one share of money with one servant, two shares of money with the other servant, and five shares of money with a third servant. And the one that had five shares, he invested it in all and ended up with ten shares. And... The master came back and said, well done, good and faithful servant. The one that had two shares of the money, he invested it and ended up with four shares, doubled his money. And the master was so pleased and said, well done, good and faithful servant. And the one that had one share, he said, well, I was afraid if I invested or something, I might lose it. So I just kind of put it under the mattress and here's your money back. And the master, you didn't do anything with it. That's not what I wanted. I wanted you to do something with it. Well, it's kind of a way to illustrate that God has given us all these things on earth and he wants us to do things with them. And even when it comes to our money, God doesn't want us to just put our money in a bank account and keep it there. He wants us to use that money to do good things. Maybe uh, use some of it to help teach people in a school or feed people or help people build houses, but to make it better for other people to live, as well as to feed you and buy you clothes and make your life good. And when God gives us a planet to take care of, he wants us to keep the water clean, just like he made it clean when he created the earth. And he wants us to keep the air clean and pure so that the animals and the people can breathe it and not dirty it all up. So when we think of all that God has given us, it's like 
with the servants in the story. He wants us to take care of it and to make it even better than it was when he was here so that when he comes back, he sees all the wonderful things we have done with what God has given us. So whether it's planting seeds into beautiful fruit trees or taking care of the oceans and the rivers and the lakes or make sure that we recycle so that we can reuse things and not have tons of trash around, God wants us to be good stewards, they're called. And stewards, it's like on a, a boat or a plane, you have a steward. They're people who take care of your needs. Well, God wants us to be good stewards for the earth, good servants to take care of all the things that he put entrusted to us. So whether or not it is giving us seeds to plant so that we can grow and feed people and make the world beautiful, or money to take care of so that we can use it to do God's work, all that we have been given by God, God wants us to use and make it even better than when he gave it to us. So we need to keep that in mind as you grow up and then you go through life. And even now, you can recycle by putting bottles and cans in the recycle bin instead of just throwing it in the trash to make this world even better for the people who are coming in the future. So thanks for listening, boys and girls, and try to make our world a better place so that when our master comes back, he says, well done, good and faithful servants. Okay. Now, I'm going to go inside and do the regular sermon for mom and dad. Okay, you can let them back. Thanks. A few years ago, I read that Emory University had posted the new tuition rates on the bulletin board at their administration building. Every department and every school had a significant increase except one. Because Chandler School of Theology was so heavily endowed, their tuition stayed the same. Someone noticed a significant difference between the School of Theology and the rest of the departments, and they wrote in red ink above the School of Theology's tuition rates, Jesus talked a lot about the use of money and possessions. 16 of the 38 parables are concerned with how to handle money and our possessions. In the Gospels, an amazing one out of 10 verses, 288 in all, deal directly with the subject of money. The Bible offers 500 verses on prayer, less than 500 verses dealing with faith, but more than 2,000 verses on money and possessions. Since Jesus in the Bible talks so much about money and possessions, it must be important to the kingdom of God. So how does today's gospel have anything to do with the kingdom of God? After all, I doubt that we'll even need money when we get into the kingdom of God. I was told that Jesus already paid the price. So let's look at today's lesson. It is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves, which can also be interpreted servants since we're servants of God, and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. And then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and traded with them and earned five talents more. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled the accounts with them. So just what is this talent that Jesus is talking about? A single talent was a huge sum of money, equal to 6,000 denarii, 20 years worth of wages. According to the U.S. Census, the median income now in America is $68,400. That would mean that in today's market, one talent would equal $1,368,000. So the one talent man received over a million dollars. That means that the other two received $2,736,000 and $6,840,000 to invest for their master, each according to their ability. So we're not talking about a paltry sum of money here. This was a significant amount. 
which means that the master had a significant amount of trust in the abilities of these three men. You just don't hand over a million dollars to a stranger that hasn't been tried and trusted. And when the master came back, they had to give an account. The one who had five talents doubled them. The one who had two talents doubled them. The one who only had one talent did nothing. The first two were praised and rewarded. Well done, good and faithful servants. But the one talent guy who buried the money is chastised and fired. So what's the big deal? The master didn't lose any money. In my previous congregation, I walked into the office one day, and a couple of volunteers were there helping out. Apparently, something had gone wrong that I didn't know about yet. And when Peg saw me, she just said, I didn't do it. Well, Betty, who was folding the bullet and said, how many times do we hear our kids say that? I didn't do it. We often think that that gets us off the hook. Simply say, I didn't do it, so they'll all know it's not your fault. But that's not always the case. One of the worst nightmares of every mother happened to a Memphis woman a couple of years ago. A woman named Anita was stopped for a traffic light at the corner of Highland and Southern Avenues. Suddenly, a stranger opened the car door, grabbed her two-month-old baby, and ran. Anita's instincts took over. She slammed the car into park, jumped out, and ran after the man. A terrified mother can move with lightning speed. And when she got near the man, he threw her baby in the ditch and kept on running. Miraculously, the child was not hurt. But thinking about the incident later, Anita talked about one fact that surprised and saddened her. She said, this happened in broad daylight, around 3.30 in the afternoon. My car was the first one at the traffic light, and there were probably 20 cars behind me. Not one person did anything to help. You can guess what went through the mind of the other drivers. Well, it could be a domestic dispute, or he could have a gun. He could be on drugs, or I'm in a hurry and I sure don't need to go picking a fight. Where are the police when you need them? But even after, even after you take all of those excuses into account, somebody should have helped, regardless of the risks. But they did nothing. I didn't do it. Well, maybe you should have. Too often we think the safest thing to do is to do nothing. You've been trained in CPR. A person on the train station goes into cardiac arrest. You just stand there doing nothing while the person dies. Is it your fault that he's dead? Or you're standing on a dock by the lake and the person's out there drowning. There's a life preserver right next to you, but you do nothing. Is it your fault that they drown? There's a story that comes from a book called The Starfisher. Picture, if you will, an early morning along the California beach. An elderly man is walking along the edge of the water and stops occasionally, picks something up, and then tosses it into the ocean. He then walks a few more steps, picks something up, but tosses it into the ocean. A young jogger is running along and has been watching the man. Finally, his curiosity gets the best of him, and he stops and goes over to the older gentleman and asks, Excuse me, but what are you doing? The man answered, Well, I'm saving the life of these starfish. The storm washed them ashore last night, and the sun will be up in about a half an hour, and they will all die. I'm throwing them back into the water to save their lives. The jogger was a bit astounded. Old man, he said, don't you know that you have about 30 miles of beach ahead of you and that millions of those starfish were washed ashore last night? What possible difference do you think you were going to make? The old man took another step, picked up a starfish, and with all his might, hurled it out into the ocean. And then he turned to the jogger and said, well, son, I guess I made a difference in that one's life. I didn't do it is not what God wants to hear. 
Today's gospel lesson is Jesus giving one more parable about the kingdom of God. The householder, which we take to be God, leaves his servants, that's probably us, to take care of his stuff. That's everything. The earth, the animals, other people, everything in all of creation. Although Jesus says they took care of his money, because even back then, Jesus knew that when you talk about money, you get people's attention. But this parable isn't about money. It's about being servants of God. It's about doing God's work. What happened when the servants faced their master? The one who had five talents doubled them? The one that had two talents doubled them? The one who had only one talent did nothing. And the gospel says, as for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The servants that do nothing must frustrate God. After all, God doesn't ask for perfection. God simply wants us to do the best we can. When he gave the servants the talents, he gave each an amount according to their ability to handle it. There are so many opportunities to serve. Participating in the Welka Coat Drive. Donating food to Manna on Main Street. Giving clothing to the mitzvah organization. Donating its mashed potatoes or canned gravy for the Thanksgiving food baskets. Purchasing your Christmas trees from Trinity's Youth to support the Appalachian Service Project. Calling our homebound members. Attending the online Bible study. Praying for others. Attending the online worship as well as the Zoom communion service more regularly. There are so many ways to be servants even during a pandemic. God knows what we are capable of doing. And doing nothing is not an option. Today we are asked for pledges to our stewardship campaign. It's a very low-key effort to obtain the information needed to help the finance committee put together a responsible budget for the year to come. We're not doing an every member visitation. We simply mailed an envelope or sent an email to each member asking them to fill out a pledge card. Okay, maybe some people are not comfortable making a commitment. You could simply write on the form, I prefer not to make a commitment at this time, and return it. But this year you have an incentive to pledge. One generous anonymous family will donate an additional $75 for every new pledge from someone who never pledged before, no matter what the amount or donate an additional $75 for everyone who increases their pledge, even by a nickel. So if you do nothing, you're costing the church $75. If only 100 people do this, the church will gain $7,500. We are God's servants, God's stewards. How are we doing in managing what our master has given to us, each according to their ability. Perhaps some people really cannot contribute financially to the work of the church and can give in other ways. In our gospel lesson, the master had some to which he could say, well done, good and faithful servants. We are asked to be faithful servants. Prayerfully think about that when you're asked to make a pledge. After all, where would we be if Jesus did nothing? Amen.
Let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of the church, ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations, and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the nations, sound forth your justice in the ears of all leaders. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable especially as international leaders forge trade agreements and cooperate to end human rights abuses. Guide our elected leaders, both present and upcoming, to lead our nation according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. We pray for healing for those in need, especially Pearl Weber, Edith Richter, Harriet Berry, Cheryl Huey, Marlene Long, Leon Strohecker, Colin Hannings, those suffering from COVID-19, those listed on our prayer list, and all those who we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the stranger, stir up holy restlessness in us to extend love to those at the margins. Release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from their labors, especially Carolyn Weber. Rouse us to live by their example, that saints yet to come may also know your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Let us continue now with our stewardship commitment.
O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Please join us in singing the Lord's Prayer. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.